It is December 14th and that means it is time to update my winter weather forecast that I made back in October. Now, for those of you that just want to see the actual forecast, I will put that timestamp in the description below so you can just skip to that if you don't want to see any of the methods that I use or the little bit more of the geeky side of things. But for those who want to see my methods, I will start with my previous predictions that I made in October. Back then, I called for 37 to 47 of inches of rain for the water year. That runs from October 1st to September 30th of the following year. Near or slightly below average temperatures during the winter, up to 3 degrees specifically below average. The lowest winter temperature being somewhere below 20 degrees. A couple of windstorms, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary 45 to 55 mile per hour peak gust in Portland. Mountain snowfall, great year in the Cascades, and then valley snowfall, average maybe slightly above average year, 2 to 8 inches. Now my methods haven't changed much from October. The biggest change is I do take a look at what's happened thus far and adjust accordingly. The same methods, however, are still used. I do look back at previous years and match them up to current year's condition using the current ENSO index, the Pacific and Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, and the sunspot count, and any historically significant trends that may apply. I will explain these the best I can when I go over them. I will make the same six predictions. The water year rainfall total, the average winter temperatures, the lowest winter temperature, windstorm frequency and or the peak gust, mountain snowfall or snow depth, and valley snowfall. I adjusted snow in the 1940s through the 1960s to have a 4.3 inch average per winter. We have been seeing that average since the early 1970s. I grouped them up into three general choices before I fine tune them for the final forecast. That being below average, near average, and above average with hyperactive being the top 10% of wettest or snowiest winters. Or in the case of wettest, wettest years. Now as we start looking at the data, let's start with the ENSO outlook. For those who don't know what ENSO, ENSO means, that is basically the, the average temperatures in the tropical Pacific. Since we're currently about 1.3 degrees Celsius below average, we are currently in a moderate La Nina. The Climate Prediction Center ensembles show that we will probably stay in a moderate La Nina for the duration of winter, though some of their ensembles have us going into a strong La Nina winter. The CFS ensembles, however, have us all in a moderate La Nina for the remainder of winter. What does this mean for our winter? Well, snow lovers rejoice because there's a 50-50 shot we'll receive six inches or more of snow. That's after adjusting. All of the winters were either near average or below average. Now, if we get into strong La Nina's, which I'm not predicting anymore, snow, snow tends to decrease, although we can have more extreme winters. Also, I know that there were no major windstorms, and even for moderate La Nina's, the windstorm odds were diminished. But our drought situation should improve with, on average, three inches above in rainfall and consistent excellent cascade snowfall through these winters. The Atlantic multidecadal oscillation hasn't really changed since October, so I didn't bother updating this. The Pacific decadal oscillation changed a little bit, although not significantly enough yet to update this chart. However, it is noticeable when we look at sea surface temperature anomaly, that blue stream of colder than average temperatures is La Nina, what I was referring to earlier. This ring of near average temperatures is the 
is PDO or the Pacific Decadal Oscillation because that is colder than the blob of warmer than average water that signifies we're currently going into a negative phase. Sunspot count hasn't really changed too much though if this was updated for the current values the next dot should be a little higher probably similar to the previous three that occurred over the summer months. And what's happened thus far? We've had eight inches of rainfall this year since October. December, we've, we're a little bit above average, 1.4 degrees specifically. Our peak wind gust has been 42 miles per hour and the lowest temperature thus far has been 29 degrees. This occurred during October and a historically significant trend that I did not mention up ahead was that winter's lowest temperature has never occurred in October. So these historically significant trends include we've, we've experienced three winters in a row with the lowest temperature failing to get below 20 degrees. With 55% of winters getting below 20 degrees, there's approximately a 5% chance we will exceed this and it's only happened one time since 1940 so the odds are we will get below 20 degrees regardless of any other factor only two winters have produced a temperature under 20 degrees with less than 1.5 inches of snow both of these winters were still this year's and what i like to call the snow drought of the mid 1970s 1973 to 74 was a strong la nina 76 77 was a weak el nino and then when it comes to our rainfalls, if the water year total by January 1st is under 12 inches, about, that's about two inches below average. No winners have gotten into an above average category. They've either been near or below average. The rest of December needs less than 4.3 inches of rain to meet this historically significant trend. And all water years have ex that have exceeded 45 inches of rain, so that's getting into the hyperactive category, have had at least 16 inches of rain by January 1st. And the next two and a half weeks of December needs 8.3 inches of rainfall. That's 150% of a normal December. So I don't think I don't think that could happen. I could see the other trend happening considering models are showing we should get somewhere between three and six inches for the rest of december though i don't really trust anything beyond seven days out so with all those factors combined these are the 12 years that most closely aligned to our current conditions with the three years highlighted in green being that my top analog years that I relied more heavily on in general. So for our snow totals, they are a little bit all over the place, although there was a lack of snowless winters, I noted, with 2007 to 2008 being the only snowless winter. Although two of the three of the top analog years both had 10 plus inches of snowfall, while the third had about three inches. The median was around six inches of snowfall. For the water year, also a little bit all over the place, but a little more compact. A lot of totals tended to be near the average, somewhere between 32 and 42 inches. A couple of stragglers above that and not really anything below. The median was about 39 inches or so. And the average winter temperature, what the median was about a degree below average for all the winters. And one trend that I really noticed is, is that a lot of my analog years had a cold snap or an Arctic blast occur in January or early February. All three of my top analog years had this too after a warm warmer than average December. That's 70, 71. The left dot there, 88, 89, and the center dot, 
and 0304 in the highest dot. No winter in my analog years were considered to be warmer than average, although only two winters were significantly colder than average. With all those combined and adjusting slightly for current conditions, these are my updated predictions. With rainfall, I decreased my rainfall forecast by four inches on both margin of errors. So now I'm saying near to slightly above average with the water year having somewhere between 33 and 43 inches of rainfall. My best estimate right now is about 39 inches, the median in my analog years. Temperatures, I'm holding it at near to below normal. I found no reason to change this. Up to three degrees below average. Best estimate also remains the same, about a degree below average. I should note that even though I say near average, that can mean we're like half a degree above average too. I would not be surprised if that is the case. When it comes to windstorms, I I'd be shocked if we didn't see at least one more half decent storm. I still don't see anything out of the ordinary when it comes to our peak gusts, somewhere between 45 and 55 miles per hour. Because the September 7th peak gust of 52 miles per hour came before my October forecast, I am excluding it from this analysis. That does not count when I do my verification when it comes to the end of the season. I'm holding on to the lowest temperature below 20 degrees since that was historically significant and was of great statistical significance. And also with that, that and with the analog years noting an enhanced chance of an Arctic blast, I'm noting that in here, especially in January through early February, I'm narrowing it down a little further. My best estimate would probably be right around 15 degrees. Snowfall, the mountain snowfall totals or the April 1st snow depth, I'm predicting to be between 110 and 180 percent of normal. I'm mainly focusing on the April 1st snow depth because I, I'm i seeing winter to be more back heavy than, than December, January heavy. I wouldn't be surprised if December doesn't turn out to be very active. With an average to above average winter being likely, I'm seeing there's a 90% chance of getting to the average marks. And for valley snowfall, I would say I am raising the snowfall totals. I'm not saying we're favoring an above average winter somewhere between three and 10 inches. Now the specific details of it, I am forecasting specifically six inches as my best estimate with most likely one to four snowstorms with an inch or more. The South Valley, and I'm talking like Corvallis, Eugene, maybe even southern portions of Salem, I would not be surprised if you get less than this just because that was a pattern in a lot of the years I looked at that there was just localized accumulations in Portland. However, a high chance we'll see at least one decent two inch plus snowstorm, although because of the warmer than average pool off the ocean, I did keep the chance of a no snow winter higher than normal, especially for a La Nina winter. So that is it with my predictions. If you want to see any other predictions any other forecaster has made, I encourage you to check out the Oregon AMS's Winter Weather Forecast Conference where I presented my October forecast and multiple other forecasters presented their forecast if you want other opinions. You can also search around for national winter weather forecasts as well. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll talk to you all soon.